G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. Now today, just for fun, I am shooting on the Z9 over there with the 300PF at 4K. I thought it would be interesting to see how this lens copes with video. It being a lens from 2015, were Nikon thinking about video seven years ago? I think they were probably starting to think about it because video has been in Nikon DSLRs for a very, very long time. Of course, as we move forwards in time, lenses are becoming more and more video capable, quieter, smoother, faster. But today, we're talking about another little technicality within the photographic world, both stills and moving. And that is, what is the difference between 35 millimeter and APS-C? And this is not a video about which is better and which is bigger and which is smaller. It's actually a video about how does it affect focal lengths? What does it mean to focal lengths? Now, I don't know about you, but I have been working with APS-C, aware of APS-C, since pretty much the start of interchangeable lens cameras in the digital space. And the first camera that I used was the Nikon D70 way back. I think it was way back in 2004. Prior to that, I had been using 35 millimeter cameras as far back as 20 years earlier, something like 1984, 1985. So I certainly know what 35 mil is. I certainly know what APS-C is. And in the Nikon space, that's called DX. They've made up their own terms, FX for full frame. Having spent 20 years with 35 mil before APS-C and another 20 years almost with 35 mil since APS-C and APS-C has always been there those last 20 years, I've certainly used a lot of both and I know them both well. APS-C was a big frustration for me before the Nikon D3 arrived, which was a full frame camera, but the Nikon D2X, which was the camera that I had before, was an APS-C camera. And I started to get frustrated that Nikon was not moving to 35 mil. Canon had years beforehand, and it almost had me changing ship almost 20 years ago. Nikon got to 35 mil and then created one of the best 35 mil digital cameras that we had ever seen and have ever seen. And it was a D3 moment. It was coined the D3 moment. And I think that's happened again with the Z9. But that is a story for an upcoming video. I wanna talk a little bit about the controversy that's gone on in my comments in regards to me talking about the fact that when you're cropped, you'll have a something equivalent lens. Now I will always say equivalent or right EQV like this on the screen to signify that it is not actually the focal length that I'm suggesting, but it is equivalent to, something similar to, roughly. And for those that don't know what I'm talking about, well, we're gonna do this in a really simple fashion with a, an extraordinarily standard lens. What we have here is the 50 millimeter 1.8 from Viltrox for the Z mount. Of course, Nikon make a Z mount 50 mil 1.8. This is a standard lens. Now, what we have here is two pretty standard cameras. This is the ZFC and this, it's a Z7. This is an APS-C camera and this is a full frame 35 millimeter camera. Let's open them up. And so we can see very clearly what the difference is. Now, I'm sure you can see there with these sensors that this one is much smaller. This one is larger. This is 35 mil. And this here is APS-C, DX, FX, DX, FX, APS-C, 35 millimeter. Again, talking about 35 mil, I'd used 35 mil for almost 20 years before this even came into existence in my world. There were smaller sensor digital cameras around. Now in the film days, there were cropped 35 mil, but they weren't cropped. You had to use smaller film, but there were smaller film types. The differences between how we use cameras today in the digital realm and how we used cameras in the film world are quite different. 
I, look, I don't know enough about all of the different film cameras that existed that weren't 35 mil, that were smaller, and whether they had detachable lenses. I don't know all about that stuff. But today we live in a world where we can have very much different size sensors, but the same mount, which means we can use the same lenses. And I think this is where some of the confusion or some of the misunderstanding or perhaps how someone like me presents the information might not come across clear to everybody. Here's a 50 mil lens, right? There it is, there's a 50 mil lens. Now a 50 mil lens is always a 50 mil lens. It's not gonna change, it's 50 mils. Now, whether I stick it on the ZFC or whether I stick it on the Z7, it is still physically a 50 mil lens. That's absolutely true, it cannot change. And the properties of a 50 mil lens do not change. So let's be very clear about that. When I put it on the Z7, it is a 50 mil lens. And when I put it on a ZFC, an APS-C camera, it is still a 50 mil lens. But something happens because of the different sized sensors. When it is on a cropped sensor camera, we get a forced crop image. This is literally nothing we can do about it because the extra information is not there because the sensor is smaller. So this is a forced cropped image versus a 35 mil frame. And so then we talk in this language, we don't say it is forced cropped so it looks like. We have used a language, a language that's been built up over the years since these things existed, and perhaps it's still informal language, which is perhaps where some of the confusion lies. This language is informal. Has it become formalized? Well, we're gonna jump online and have a look at that in a minute, and whether online can be considered formal or not, I don't know. But when we stick a 50 mil lens onto a ZFC, we do not get the angle of view of a 50 mil lens. We get the angle of view of roughly a 75 mil lens. And so that's why we say equivalent. Maybe we should say equates to. Maybe there's lots of other words we could use. But equivalent seems to be the word that's become commonplace parlance. We look up 50 millimeter equivalent on APS-C. A 50 mil lens on APS-C cameras is nearly a perfect portrait pairing. On Canon cameras, it's a 1.6 times crop, which is around 80 mil. But for the rest of the world, it's a 75 millimeter equivalent. Thus, the 50 mil lens on a cropped sensor camera becomes similar to, equates to, is somewhat like a 75 millimeter lens because there is a 1.5 times crop on that 50 mils. So 50 mils times 1.5 is 75. And so that's it. Indeed, it is a 50 mil lens, but it kind of looks like a 75 mil lens. We're basically saying relative to a 35 mil camera, this combination will look like a 75 mil lens. That's why we say 35 mil equivalent. Now, if we were talking in a different language, if we had a different system or different reference points, then it would come out a different way. But it seems to make sense to equate everything to 35 mil because 35 mil has been the ubiquitous language, the ubiquitous frame size and sensor size that we've all had for decades and decades. And I'm sure that 35 mil in the interchangeable lens space has been the most common format. So it makes sense that we equivalent to 35 mil. In other words, we're basically saying, how does this match to 35 mil? We are trying to equate things to 35 mil. It's just quick shorthand. It's like, ha ha, okay, what will this lens look like equivalent to a 35 mil experience? And this is just quick shorthand. A 50 mil will look like 75 mil. Another place this seems to confuse people is when you make the same statement when you're on a full frame camera, like the Z7 here, this is a full frame camera. Now we're putting an APS-C lens 
This is an APS-C lens on a full frame camera. So what happens? The camera automatically forces itself to cropped mode. And that's fine. In the case of the Z7, which is 45 plus megapixels, you still have almost 20 megapixels to play with, which crazily is much the same as the pixels that you have to play with on the ZFC. And so isn't it fine if you want a little bit of extra reach? Isn't it fine that you crop your camera to APS-C? What if you know you don't need what's around the edges? And so thus, you could say, when I put this 50 mil lens onto the Z7 and I crop it, well, it is equating to a look of 75 mil. And if I know I don't need those areas outside of the APS-C crop, then that's totally fine. And thus, we will say it's equivalent to, it equates to. 75 mil. So when you hear me in my videos going, right now we're cropped and this lens has gone from 1000 to 1500 mils equivalent, it means that I'm cropping the frame. And I'll probably say that I'm in DX or APS-C, which means by default it is a cropped frame. And of course, once we're working in a cropped frame, we are always dealing with the language of equivalent. It's always going to be 35 mil equivalent. If I was to say to you, I've got a 50 mil lens on my ZFC, it looks like 50 mil. And for me, who has most of my life and most of my time in photography worked with 35 mil, I would far prefer you to say to me that the frame is equivalent to roughly, it roughly equates to 75 mil. And then I can wrap my head around it. Because if you said to me, oh, we've got a 50 mil field of view, that doesn't help me. I suppose you could say we've got a 50 mil field of view on a crop sensor camera. And I would go, ah, oh, yes, well, that's closer to 75 equivalent, isn't it? So ultimately, I think this is a discussion of semantics. I will continue to talk in that way. I will say equivalent and I will either write it on screen or I will say it. Or I will say we are cropped. They're kind of the three different things we will say. But any of those three things should be the trigger to say that we are working in cropped and this is not actually 75 mils, but it kind of feels like somewhat 75 mils. But of course, this is still a 50 mil lens and that can't change. So there we have it. You know, there's no right or wrong in any of this. It's just about us all being clear. And if you'd like me to further deep dive on this subject, please do let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think about this. Should we, when we are working in APS-C, simply say, this is a 50 mil lens and basically just let people work it out for themselves. We should say nothing further than that. Or if we choose to work on a 35 mil sensor and we are cropping it because creatively we want to crop it, like that's the choice we are making. Again, how do we communicate that? And I personally think it's okay to say we're on a 35 mil lens, we are cropping to APS-C and this is giving us an equivalent focal length. Not the focal length, an equivalent one. And I'm not sure how else we're supposed to communicate that. I'd love to know your thoughts about this in the comments below. It does seem to be a bit contentious and maybe, maybe some of it comes from the fact that some people have only ever worked with cropped sensors. I don't know. But for people who've worked with many different sensor size, I've worked with medium format, 35mm, APS-C and smaller. Well, I'm quite happy for 35mm to be kind of the point with which we all refer back to. Basically, that's a standard. I'm happy for that to be a standard. So please let me know in the comments below, how would you like to talk about focal lengths in regards to these devices? I've put a little poll below. All right, thank you so much for being here today. It's absolutely been magnificent to see you. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share and please like. 
jump on our website, grab yourself some merch, and don't forget channel memberships. All right, bye now from the 300 PF. I'm looking forward to getting that out in the field. It is an astonishing lens for what I've seen so far. I don't think people talk about these lenses enough. See ya.